Hello and welcome back to another Magic the Gathering EDH deck tech idea. Today we are taking a look at Joda, the Unifier. It is a 5 mana 5-5 five five and legendary creatures you control get plus x plus x where x is the number of legendary creatures you control. He also has a triggered ability, whenever you cast a legendary spell from your hand, exile cards from the top of your library until you exile a legendary non-land card with lesser mana value. You may cast that card without paying its mana cost and put the rest on the bottom of your library in a random order. This basically means that Joda lets you cascade when you cast legendary spells, so this is exactly what this deck is about to do. We are playing very powerful legendary cards from all different 5 color pips and want to accumulate an army of legendary creatures that we can overrun our opponents with. Due to the fact that Joda costs 5 mana and that he is also a kill on sight commander, we do first need to ramp heavily to bring him out and then in the best case immediately cast a legendary spell to get at least some value out of him before taking the risk that he gets removed. So we play cards like Sky Shroud Claim, a 4 mana sorcery, search library for up to 2 forest cards, put them onto the battlefield and then shuffle. In many cases this deck requires a lot of really good lands like Triumphs and Shocklands, so playing sorceries that allow you to fetch for forests that come in untapped can also leave you with mana to have interaction ready. You play Kamal's Druidic Vow, a 2 mana green and X legendary sorcery and look at the top X cards of your library, you may put any number of lands and or legendary permanent cards with converted mana cost X or less from among them onto the battlefield and put the rest into your graveyard. This is extremely powerful in the early game but also extremely powerful in the late game as it is still a legendary sorcery that can give you a huge board state. Of course you play Soaring, a 1 mana artifact to add 2 colorless mana which will help you to cast other ram spells way more efficiently. Then we also go for Izika, God of the Tree, a 3 mana 1-4 with Vigilance. You can tap her to add 1 mana of any color and also other legendary creatures you control have Vigilance and tap them to add 1 mana of any color. Either you bring her out in the early game to fix your mana colors or you can also cast her for her backside in the late game which is the Prismatic Bridge, a 5 mana legendary enchantment and at the beginning of your upkeep reveal cards from the top of your library until you reveal a creature or planeswalker card, put that card onto the battlefield and rest on the bottom of your library in a random order. Of course we play Nature's Law, a 2 mana sorcery, search a library for a forest card, put that card onto the battlefield and then shuffle. Just like free visits, a 2 mana sorcery, search a library for a forest card, put it onto the battlefield and then shuffle. Once we've brought out Joda, we want to cascade with a lot of legendary spells and most preferably creatures, but there are also a lot of other legendary artifacts in this deck that can help us to trigger Joda. For example, the Great Henge, a non-minor legendary artifact, this spell costs X less to cast where X is the greatest power among creatures you control. You can tap it to add 2 green mana and gain 2 life and whenever a non-token creature enters the battlefield under your control, put a 1-1 counter on it and draw a card. There's also Hero's Podium, a 5 mana legendary artifact and each legendary creature you control gets plus 1 plus 1 for each other legendary creature you control. If you are low on legendary spells to cast you can also pay X and tap it and look at the top X cards of your library. You may reveal a legendary creature card from among them and put it into your hand and put the rest on the bottom of your library in a random order. For even more free value we play Shemil, the Inner Sun, a legendary artifact for 6 mana and spells you control can't be countered. At the beginning of your end step discover 5. Let's fix our mana for the rest of the game. Chromatic Orrery, a 7 mana legendary artifact, you may spend mana as though it were mana of any color. You can tap it to add 5 colorless mana and you can also pay 5 mana and tap it to draw a card for each color among permanents you control. We also play Everson's Memorial, an 8 mana legendary artifact which is indestructible and other legendary permanents you control have indestructible. Last but not least we play Agatha's Soul Cauldron, a 5 mana legendary artifact you may spend mana as though it were mana of any color to activate abilities of creatures you control. Creatures you control with plus 1 plus 1 counters on them have all activated abilities of all creature cards exiled with Agatha's Soul Cauldron and you can also tap it to exile target card from a graveyard. When a creature card is exiled this way, put a 1-1 counter on target creature you control. Okay, and now let's feature a few of the powerful creatures that we want to cascade into or also cast to cascade into even more legendary spells. For example, Machesa, the Black Rose, a 4-mana 3-3 with Dethrone, 
So whenever this creature attacks the player with the most life or tied for the most life, put a 1-1 counter on it. Other creatures you control have dethroned. And whenever a creature you control with a plus one plus one counter on it dies, return that card to the battlefield under your control at the beginning of the next end step. She will help you to take care of the player with the most life. And while doing that, you also secure your board from a board wipe. Galta, Primal Hunger, a 12 mana 12 12 with trample, and this spell costs X less to cast, where X is the total power of creatures you control. In this deck, it is quite easy to get the full discount on Galta, and it will also help you to cascade into the highest legendary spells that you still have in your deck. Ratadrabic of Urborg, a 4 mana 3 3 with Vigilance and War 2, and other zombies you control have Vigilance. Whenever another legendary creature you control dies, create a token that's a copy of that creature, except it's not legendary and it's a 2-2 black zombie in addition to its other types and colors. Another great board protection for you aside from Marchesa. And to give our board a little bit more anthem effects, we play Elishnorn Grand Cenobite, a 7 mana 4-7 with Vigilance, and other creatures you control get plus 2 plus 2, and creatures your opponents control get minus 2 minus 2. Due to the fact that we are a 5 color deck, we also play our Aragorn the Uniter, a 4 mana 5-5, five five. and whenever you cast a white spell, create a 1-1 one one white human soldier creature token. Whenever you cast a blue spell, scry 2. Whenever you cast a red spell, Aragorn the Uniter deals 3 damage to target opponent. And whenever you cast a green spell, target creature gets plus 4 plus 4 until end of turn. And another great anthem effect is Arvard, the Cursed, a 5 mana 3-3 free free with Death Touch and Lifelink, and other legendary creatures you control get plus 2 plus 2. You want to win more? You get it. Relic of Legends, a 3 mana artifact, you can tap it to add 1 mana of any color, and you can tap an untapped legendary creature you control to add 1 mana of any one color. This mana rock is extremely powerful, especially in this deck, simply because we play a bunch of legendary creatures, and your opponents won't see it coming when they see you completely tapped out, and even when Relic of Legends is tapped, for as long as you have untapped creatures, you still have mana available. And last but not least, we play Rakdos Joins Up, a 5 mana legendary enchantment, and when it enters the battlefield, return target creature card from your graveyard to the battlefield with two additional plus one plus one counters on it. Whenever a legendary creature you control dies, Rakdos Joins Up deals damage equal to that creature's power to target opponent. First of all, this card has a great synergy with Joda, simply because Joda is a huge anthem effect, and what your board is most afraid of is simply being board wiped. So Ractus joins up is another great insurance that if your opponents dare to pull a board wipe, you will at least take out one player with this card. Alright guys, these were a few cards that I would play in Joda the Unifier. Make sure to check out my deck list in the notes. Let me know down in the comments below which cards I should add to the deck, which legendary creature I shall feature next, and then I would say see you in the next one. Goodbye guys.